Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you a little bit of iOS magic. Do you know the UI split view controller? Uh, yes, of course you do, and it's uh, mainly prominent on iPad, so this is what it looks like, a classic app. On the left-hand side we have the master view controller, and we click this little plus button here, and you press one of these things and you could get to see the detail of representation on the right. Now, as per Apple's documentation and um, paradigm, the split view controller has to be the root view controller in any app. So we shouldn't be able to do things like this. This is by definition not even possible. And uh, yeah, that's, that's true. You can't present this view controller over the split view, but quite clearly there has to be a way of making this happen and many apps need to have something like a welcome view or like a login view controller before they even present the split view controller. While we can switch out the split view controller for a different view controller altogether, it takes a bit of trickery and jiggery pokery to make it look like we could even present something like this um, form sheet on top of the split view controller. And this is the app that we're going to build today. So it's going to be a fully working um, app based on the master detail template with the addition that we can indeed show an overlay view controller on top of the split view. And it'll work in portrait as well as landscape. So let me just uh, rotate that to portrait. And then we need to show this works just the same and it'll work on iPhone as well with literally no extra setup. We're going to do this with Xcode 7.1 in iOS 9.1 and well let's let's get started and see how this works. First of all the magic behind this is that we're not presenting the view controller from the master view controller or from the detail view controller or in fact from the split view controller. The only thing that we're doing is we're going to grab a screenshot of this view programmatically and uh, we'll switch out the split view controller with a completely different view controller that will have the screenshot as the background and as soon as we press show overlay that will be presented over a static UI image and as soon as we say dismiss here on our overlay view controller then we'll go back and switch the um, temporary view controller back out for the split view controller and then the app will start working again. But for the ordinary user, there's no interruption in the user experience. So let's see how we do this step by step. I'll launch Xcode and create a brand new Xcode project. It'll be based on the master detail application. I will use core data indeed to make it even more interesting and I'll call it screw the split view. There we go. I'll put that on my desktop. There, let's just see what this looks like if I run it on the trusty old iPad 2 because it fits onto my screen here. There, so it uh, it comes up like this. Uh, you can click the plus button a few times, so you can uh, delete cells here the usual way. And uh, we have an edit button here. I'm going to replace that edit button. Apple do that in code. Well, thanks to core data, all these values will survive an app restart. So we've got something here. Okay, let's have a look at the master view controller first. And here under the view did load method, we have the, um, the first line here creates the edit button. And let's take that out and uh, create our own button here. And I'll just call it show overlay. target is self and the action well it'll be a selector uh, which we haven't written yet so we will just uh, call this method show overlay as well and now that we have that we need to add that to the navigation item there that'll do that but of course there's no method to call that thing yet. So uh, let me collapse all these methods and at the very bottom uh, Some commented code. Let me take that out here. Uh, we will create our own little section here 
the wrong keyboard drive. I'm using a UK keyboard on a US machine. That's going to confuse anybody. There we go. There. So our method is going to be called, it's a void method. It'll be called show overlay. And what we want to do here is um, we want to call these methods centralized in the app delegate. So I'm just going to put the stub here and I'm going to import the app delegate into the master view controller class. And we will code these methods in app delegate and then we're going to hook this up here. It's going to you know, make for nicer code completion and all that. Right, that's the stub, that's the button done. Let's head over to our app delegates implementation file. And here under did finish launching with options, the managed object context is being pushed onto the master control, master view controller, which is being extracted from the split view controller via a navigation controller. So it's, you know, it's quite a bit of uh, elaborate setup here uh, so that we don't have to do that again. We're gonna create a property And it'll be a UI split view controller so that when we swap this view out for another view entirely, we can bring it back later when we get to dismiss it. Let me collapse all these methods here. And once again, at the very bottom of the app delegates implementation file, I will add three methods here. Uh, we need to, two of them need to be public. One doesn't have to be public. The first one is going to return a UI image, and I'm going to call that grab screenshot. Just return nil there for a moment so that we get the um, the warning out of the way. The other two methods will be the two that will be called from other view controllers. So the first one is a void method and it will be called show overlay. And the second one, also a void method, we will call dismiss overlay. Well, that makes sense. One method will be called when the split view is being switched out and when we're done with the overlay view controller and we want to dismiss it, then this method is going to be called dismiss overlay to bring the split view back. Now with this method here, the grab screenshot, this is going to be a little bit of a complex kind of code and I'm just going to consult my own website for that, where there's an article called how to take a screenshot in iOS programmatically. You can access this code, it's the one under option one, and I'm just going to copy this and paste that in there. This would make it a lot more complicated if I'd explain this to you now. It's just, you know, let's just leave it there and paste that in here. And of course, what we need to do is return this UI image called screen grab. Great, so what, what this method will do is create a screenshot of the currently running app, no matter if it's an iPhone, iPad, no matter if it, the orientation is landscape or portrait, it will do that and return the screenshot as a UI image. This is going to come in handy in a moment. So let me collapse that because we don't really need to look at this complex brain draining code anymore. <laughs> and uh, in fact, let's create the show overlay method. Now, this is the biggest method that we're going to write from scratch here. Before I do, I just want to quickly switch to another tab and have a look at my storyboard. Uh, there we go. This has this really complex setup split view controller goes into a navigation controller for the master view controller and it also has that for navigation controller and the split the, the detail view controller we're going to add one to that just a simple view controller and we're gonna oops there we go it has to be 100 percent we're gonna perhaps color that in a nice green color and create a button. No, actually we don't need a button. We're going to just embed this whole thing in a navigation controller as well. So embed in navigation controller. 
this will look more complicated than it actually is. The navigation controller will bring this view controller up and the navigation controller we want to grab from the storyboard in code in a moment. So uh, we'll select this, go to the attributes inspector. Is the attributes inspector in it? Identity inspector. I always mix them up. Attributes inspector is here, identity inspector is there. Under storyboard ID, I'm going to call him overlay just so that I have a reference that I can create this guy in code. So we're bringing up the navigation controller, which will automatically bring up this overlay view controller. And on here, we're going to create a bar button item. Drag that in, call that dismiss. I like doing it this way because it's easy to add buttons here. Uh, if you have to muck around with auto layout here, it's just it's just ruining everything, doesn't it? So um, we can maybe put a label into the middle here, and you can say anything you like. Yeah. Your message, oops, your message here. just so that we make sure the constraints are fine. I'm just going to click Add Missing Constraints. It goes off the screen here, but I hope this is going to satisfy Xcode and this horrendous auto layout, which nobody likes. But hey. So we need one other class. Let's create one. And it'll be a subclass of the UI view controller. We'll call it overlay view controller. And we only need that because there's one single method that needs to be in here. Let's associate that also in the identity inspector. That is correct. Overlay view controller. And let's change into the assistant editor so that we can hook up this button to our code. Navigation, we don't really need, so we're gonna delete that code. From the dismiss button, control drag to anywhere in the code and let it go. And uh, I'll call this method dismiss button pressed. There. And uh, this will call the centralized method in the app delegate file that we haven't quite written yet, but we've put some rudimentary code there, so we're going to hook that up in a moment as soon as we're done. So that's his prep work. Let's go back to the app delegate and finish those two methods off. The screen grab method that we had, that is just a private method that will be called from the app delegate, but the show overlay and dismiss overlay methods, those need to be public, so we're going to copy this paste those signatures into the header file and the other one was dismiss overlay there so now the other classes can call these two methods which they need to do so that's you know that's good so one of them let's just finish off the overlay and the master view controller um, we've just been playing with the overlay view controller, dismiss button pressed. What we want to do here is, um, well, import the app delegate into this. And we get that by calling the UI application shared application dot delegate. And this is being typecasted to the app delegate class, which is very convenient. So all we need to do here now is call this method on the app delegate that says dismiss overlay. Okay, that's what happens in the overlay view controller. Add your own logic in this class with, say, login details for a customer or perhaps uh, you want to add something that makes the split view behave in a different way, um, swap out store files for the underlying core data store, something like that. That's, you know, you would probably do that in here. And uh, as soon as the user's done, uh, wants to save their changes, you hit the, um, you hit the done button and uh, then this, this method in the app delegate is called. Righty, so in the master view controller we have a similar scenario. We have the show overlay method here. So um, once again, if I've already 
imported the app delegate, we do something very similar. We we'll grab a reference to our app delegate, shared application delegate, and then we're going to call the show overlay method on here. We will come back to this method. There is something um, that's probably better demonstrated than uh, than shown to you right now. But uh, this is this is what we're going to do in order to call the centralized show the overlay and dismiss the overlay methods. Right now, we're going to return to our app delegates implementation file and do this beefy method that will actually switch out the split view controller for a random, well, temporary view controller. Uh, join me for that in the next video. The rest of this video is only available to paying members of the iOS Dev Diary. But don't panic, you can become a paying member very easily. Head over to pinkstone.co.uk, that's the address of my iOS Dev Diary. And then head over here where it says sign up for full access. So the first thing is you're going to click here onto step one to create a free account. It doesn't cost you a penny, but is necessary so that you can uh, log in here where it says username and password later. Once you've signed up, once you're logged in, you click on step two where it says choose your membership plan and then you get full access. I've got daily membership plans, I've got annual membership plans, and I've got lifetime membership plans. I highly recommend it that you sign up. And if you do, I would very much enjoy that and it would uh, show your support for this website and make it possible for me to create more of these ultra amazing videos. Membership has its privileges. It's not just the rest of this video. It's lots of other videos that explain things in a humanly understandable way of how to write iOS apps. There's a, there's a ton of screencasts. There's a ton of written tutorials that I've put behind the uh, paywall for membership only access. And you also get rid of those pesky adverts on the website. So as soon as you're a member, a paying member, no more adverts on the website. So if you do, sign up, watch the rest of this video, I will see you on the other side.